Hello everyone, my name is Katie and this is my brand new YouTube um, video blog, I guess you could say. It is a blog about science and anti-aging and basically I want to take a look at what studies say about um, aging and beauty and the body and the research. The first article that I have here today has to do with collagen, but before I get into that, I just want to kind of introduce myself. Um, like I said, my name is Katie Lynn, and the name of my blog is gotchaguys.com, and I'll have that in the links below, but um, I'm not like a scientist. I don't necessarily have a science background. Um, my background is actually... Um, and business and software. I have a small software company with my pareja, but um, I have like an interest in um, anti-aging and supplements and like health and beauty and fitness. And I do a lot of research on my own, so I decided I would start a blog. And this one today is about um, the science. What does the science say about drinking collagen? So I have an article that goes along with this so it will be pretty much the same as what I have here on this um, video here. So let's get started. So what does the college, what does the science say about drinking collagen? Because I know there's been a lot of debate that people say. Some people say, oh, it just gets dissolved and it turns into amino acids, so it can't really help your skin because collagen doesn't turn into collagen. It just turns into like amino acids and gets broken down when you drink it. And so I thought the same thing because I was drinking collagen and wondering if it was doing any good, if it was gonna benefit me or not. So I decided to look it up. So I found a couple studies and these are um, the results of my finding, I guess you could say. Okay, so ingesting, or eating, drinking, or even there's pills available too that you can take collagen is quite popular, um, but some skeptics, like I said, don't know if it's worth the effort and maybe you have a question about whether it's worth it for you to be drinking this every day and spending all this money and to tell you the truth I actually drink um, like old school Knox gelatin um, I put it in my coffee but um, this specific these articles that I found are these um, these research I guess studies <laughs> that I found have to do with something called collagen hydro, hydrolysate, which basically is hydro, hydrolyzed collagen, hydrolyzed collagen, which is pretty common in the drinkable collagen because if you take gelatin, you have to mix it in a hot drink because it, otherwise it turns into gel or it won't dissolve. So the hydrolyzed collagen is broken down even further than gelatin both come from basically animal skin and bones, but hydrolyzed collagen is broken down further than gelatin is, but they come from the same source. So I drink mine as gelatin, but a lot of people drink theirs as the hydrolyzed collagen, which is broken down further, like I said. Okay, so hydrolyzed collagen, which is derived from collagen, it comes from the same thing as gelatin does, it just broken down further. Um, it comes from the collagen fibrils, and it's broken down into smaller peptides. And I thought that was interesting because some people say that the stomach um, breaks it down too much to the point where it's not usable, but I, I learned something interesting. Um, so I'm just gonna go over a couple of vocabulary words before I get started here. So the first one, I already went over a little bit, but collagen hydro hydrolysate is basically hydrolyzed collagen, which I already described. It's just broken down a little bit further than gelatin and it comes from animal skins and bones. The other vocabulary word I have here is hydroxyproline and proline, which are two, um, well, hydroxyproline is a peptide and proline is an, an amino acid that are found in collagen and gelatin and hydrolyzed collagen and they both play a large part in providing collagen stability. Hydro, hydroxyproline is made from proline, but it has a hydroxyl group attached. So that's the difference between hydroxylproline and proline. The little, little hydroxyl group that's attached 
to the molecule. Okay, and all of this hydroxylation magic happens inside of the cell. It happens in the endoplasmic reticulum. Um, so if you remember the cell from biology class, which was a long time ago for me, but um, all the parts of the cell, it has an endoplasmic reticulum. This is where the proline is hydroxylated. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because this process of hydroxylation requires vitamin C. And that is why if you have a deficiency in vitamin C, you will develop scurvy because you will also have a deficiency in hydroxyproline and this will weaken your collagen and cause all kinds of problems that scurvy causes like bleeding gums and stuff like that. And I actually heard recently that in Australia, they're having a resurgence of um, scurvy. So it's, it's really, it's very real. If you don't get enough vitamin C in your diet, you can get scurvy. You don't have to be a pirate. <laughs> so anyways, um, okay. The next vocabulary word I have is cell prolif proliferation. Cell proliferation is basically a fancy word for cell growth and division. Um, and cell proliferation has had a bad rap because cell proliferation is also um, something that cancer cells do quite well because cancer cells don't age the same way that our cells in our body do. Um, they proliferate quite well, but in this case, in this context, um, as it relates to your skin and collagen, you want your cells to prolif proliferate. Pro proliferate. So, um, the next vocabulary word, hyaluronic acid, also known as hyaluronin. Hyaluronin. These words are kind of hard for me today. Okay, so hyaluronin is actually the newer name for hyal hyaluronic acid because it's actually not an acid, so it's not technically correct to call it an acid. It's a uh, salt. So um, the the new official name is hyaluronin, but a lot of people still call it hyaluronic acid, including scientists and in um, the studies. So it goes by both names. It means the exact same thing. So the average person has 15 grams of this in their body. And the amazing thing is, is that you recycle five grams, up to five grams a day. So your body destroys it and makes it over again, the hyaluronic acid. But as a supplement, um, you can supplement with hyaluronic acid, but um, the dose is very small and it can cause some stomach upset. So be very careful if you're supplementing with it. I personally don't, but um, I wanted to mention it because it does come up in this article and in these studies. So hyaluronic acid or hyaluronin, hyaluronin, maybe it's hyaluronin. Um, okay, so as far as healing, cell, pro cell proliferation, and skin repair go, hyaluronin, it holds water and it creates space that the cells need to grow and it also allows them to move, the cells, it allows the cells to move, which is why it's so critical to cell division in the skin. It also acts as a filler or plumper, so if you got like wrinkles and stuff like this, it may be because you have a lack of hyaluronin, hy hy hyaluronin, hy hyaluronic acid. Maybe that's why people still say that, because it's easier to say. Okay, so um, hyaluronin is beneficial for maintaining a youthful appearance because it promotes cell growth, increases collagen, and holds moisture in the skin. Okay, next vocab word is extracellular matrix. Extracellular matrix, okay, is found everywhere in the body, literally. It's um, something that's between cells, actually, but as far as skin, um, well, collagen is the most abundant protein found in the extracellular matrix, and collagen gives support and structure to cells by supporting cells from the outside, and hyaluronic acid is formed on the inside of the cells, and then the cells secrete hyaluronin during biosynthesis when cells are dividing for repair. 
hyaluronin is excreted from the cell into the extracellular matrix to provide hydration and space for the cell to divide. So back to our question, can drinking gelatin or hydrolyzed collagen improve your skin and remove wrinkles? Because that's what we really want to know, right? Okay, so there was a study done in Japan, 2009, and I'll list it in the um, below in the comments or the section, whatever. Um, so anyway, this study was focused on proline and hydroxyproline that were derived from collagen. So it was studying basically the peptide and the amino acid. But the study says, our results suggest that oral ingestion of collagen hydrolysate may lead to more viscous and elastic skin resulting in improvement of skin appearance. And also on the abstract of that same study, it says orally ingested collagen undergoes degradation to small di or tripeptides, which are detected in circulating blood two hours after ingestion. And I learned also from this study that our intestines have um, transporters for small peptides. So when you're taking the collagen or the gelatin or whatever, your stomach doesn't necessarily break everything down into the smallest component because you have in your intestines these peptide transporters and a bunch of other things, obviously, that can take peptides whole, small peptides, and, and incorporate them into your body, which I find amazing, but um, that's, how, that's how it works. That's how drinking collagen gets into your skin, basically. But there's more. <laughs> So orally ingested collagen undergoes degradation, which basically is the digestion process. It turns into peptides, different peptides. So at this point I was reading the study and I was like, wow, this is pretty amazing. So this study is saying that scientists had test subjects drink collagen and discovered that the collagen was broken down into smaller peptides, including the hydroxyproline and the proline by the stomach. And they know this because they tested the blood of the study participants and they could detect the, the peptides. Okay, so the researchers tested the blood and they found the peptides. And the study also said that ingesting collagen, um, they found that it increased cell proliferation or cell mitosis by a factor of 1.5 and it also increased production of hyaluronic acid by a factor of 3.8, so that's almost almost four times as much production of hyaluronic acid as the body has normally in its baseline level. Okay, that's, that's quite a bit. So one and a half times normal cell growth and four times the production of hyaluronic acid after ingesting the collagen. So that's significant. Um, it didn't say how long the effect lasts after you drink the collagen or you drink the gelatin. So that would be interesting to find out maybe at a later date. I will be able to discover that. But um, so far we know that cell growth increases and the production of hyaluronic acid increases. Okay. And there was a couple other studies that I found. There was one study that um, they gave the hydrolyzed collagen to human beings, um, monkeys, mice, rats, and hamsters. And I don't know if they let the rats use like a straw or something or the hamsters, but um, maybe the men did, I don't know. And then they tested their pee. So after that, they did find um, higher levels of peptide bound proline, hydroxyproline, aspartic acid, glycine, alanine, and free hydroxylysine. I don't know what that is, but they they found higher levels than the test subjects had initially at baseline. So they tested a bunch of different animals and also human beings. Okay, so that's great. That's great that you can find the peptides, but what we really want to know is 
can ingesting collagen lead to a reduction in wrinkles and more youthful skin? Because that's why we're drinking it. Well, that's why I'm drinking it. Some people drink it for their joints and um, for their intestinal health too. And those things are great too. But that's not what I was researching. So um, I was researching to find out if it could help your skin look more youthful and reduce your wrinkles. So I found another study that says oral ingestion of 2.5 grams of collagen, hydrolyzed collagen, every day for eight weeks significantly improves skin elasticity. The effect was more pronounced in postmenopausal women, so that would be generally older women, and the elasticity declined back to its original level after the study participants stopped drinking the collagen. So it's an effect that lasts while you're taking the collagen. And this study also showed, this was something that I liked, this study also showed a significant decrease in periorbital wrinkles. And periorbital wrinkles are wrinkles around the eye. So 11% decrease in the periorbital wrinkles. So I thought that was pretty good. I'll take 11%, it's better than no percent. So I'd like to see that as doing something. And my verdict was, while collagen cannot completely erase wrinkles and return my complexion back to my 16-year-old or 20-year-old self, it seems clear to me that it has benefits and I'm not ready to give up drinking my collagen just yet. I think the science shows that it has benefits and definitely it also has benefits for joints and your gut health and probably a whole lot of other things, honestly, that don't have to do with looks, but I think that's great. I think that's necessary. So um, anyways, let me know what you think. If you like this video, I will be having more like it. I plan to do one on vitamin C and one on sunscreen and um, I have a couple others planned. So if you want to see what the science says, go ahead and like this video and subscribe. And also um, take a look at my blog and you can subscribe to that and receive the articles in your email. Thank you for listening and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.